Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I am Reema Tanuka. With me is Sonal Bhutra, and these are the top stories that we're tracking at 1:30 p.m. Markets hold gains. Financials, autos, IT lead the gains. Metals slide. The midcaps underperform. A sharp slide in crude prices to below $90 a barrel mark gives a fillip to stocks of oil marketing companies. Even consumers heave a sigh of hope. Indigo co-founder and former director Rakesh Gangwal sells a small 2.8% stake in Interglobe Aviation that runs Indigo Airlines. The small slice of his over 30% stake kicks off what is likely to be a gradual drawdown. The stock slips. Cement stocks they hold gains. The management of Sri Digwijay Cement tells CNBC TV 18 there will be some consolidation in next two to three quarters. Kesaram Industries management tells CNBC TV 18 that the company has not managed to entirely pass on increase in costs to consumers. Good afternoon. Markets and numbers as we speak: seventeen thousand seven hundred and forty-three. A gain of one twenty points. It's broadly been a stable session for our markets. The mid caps too. Have come off. On the other hand, the mid-cap index is down 0.8 percent from the high point of the day, and is just managing to hold on to the green line, um, just up close to about 0.1 percent. Talking about the big winners for the day, Shree Cement is the top gainer. It's up close to about five and a half percent. Private sector financials, ICICI Bank, Axis Bank, higher in trade. Oil marketing companies like BPCL, HPCL gain as crude prices decline to sub $90 per barrel, and you can also see some strength. For IT names like Tech Mahindra, in fact, the Nifty IT index itself is an outperformer. On the losing side, you can see a slide coming through in steel names, commodity names, so Hindalco, Tata Steel, Coal India. So the entire commodity basket is Not under pressure. Things. But overall, of course, right, uh, the Stay. day has been great for our own markets, and uh, you know, generally, the Bank Nifty is the one which is outperforming the Nifty by a big margin. But a lot of stocks in the broader markets as well, which are in focus, and there's one company that we are focusing on today, Wellspun Corp. Uh, the stock has seen gains of Over 37 percent in 2022 so far. To understand the business prospects and a lot more, we have with us Mr. Vipul Mathur, the managing director and chief executive officer of the company, with us in the studio to discuss that. Uh, Mr. Mathur, good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us here. It's always great to have these in-person conversations and understand the business outlook as well. So thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. Talking to you. And generally, so uh, your business is into transmission via pipes to oil and gas uh, sector, right? That is uh, one of the things that you do. I wanted to understand FY22 was impacted because of lower oil prices that we had been talking about. How are things right now? We are seeing oil below the $90 a barrel mark, but still it is at a higher level. What is the demand looking like, and what does it mean for you in terms of FY23 revenue margin guidance? So the oil demand seems to be fairly strong. The prices seems to be strong. The demand seems to be strong, and it is uh, pan global. You know, if you look at India, if you look at Southeast Asia, if you look at Americas, I think so. The demand is uh, looking good. The price is in uh, range bound. It is uh, flo- floating between ninety dollars to hundred or hundred plus dollars. Looks like it continues to be the way. That's the way it is looking like at this point in time. And if that is the case, we are seeing. Uh, a lot of demand coming up for the pipelines you know there has been no capex which has been done over the last couple of years people have completely understood all the you know the enp companies all mm-hmm. the midstream companies they have completely understood that this oil and gas infrastructure need to be augmented and after a long gap we are seeing a pent up demand coming up back into that and that is where we are seeing the future for the pipelines for the next couple of years is going to be looking uh, very bright to us no signs of slowdown whatsoever <laughs> we have just come out of a slowdown uh-huh. to be honest you know we don't want But people to see are it. talking about another slowdown doesn't look that way to be at this point in time if you okay. look at all the indicators what we are watching or what we are monitoring at this point in time looks like this demand for the capex investment into the infrastructure infrastructure segment of oil and gas pipelines is going to be so there for next couple of years so even though crude prices have dipped to 90 dollars per barrel you're not saying you're not seeing oil and gas companies hold back on their capex because not it's really. Not uh-huh. really. We are not seeing at this point of time. You have to keep in mind that you know, for the last three or four years, you know, they have not been doing that type yes. of capex which they have been doing traditionally. Yeah. Hmm. So there is a complete backlog which is, hmm. a, you know, which is in place. Number one. Number two, people thought that renewable is going to come at the way very fast. It's not happening at the pace hmm. that it should have been happening. So which means that the demand for oil and gas transportation is still going to be there. Mm. The pipelines would still be required, and that is the play we would mm. continue to enjoy with. Yes, and all the oil and gas companies are talking about higher capex, right? You speak to ONGC, Oil India, all of them are speaking about it. So since things are looking so good, demand is strong. 
give us a reason as to what happened in quarter one. Why did margins fall so much? And considering that, now you're, that you're saying demand is strong, what will your margin picture look like in FY23? And order book at around 13,400 crore rupees, how much is executable in this year itself? So, quarter one was abnormal you know we have just come out you know there was it was a high it, it there was a huge impact of the commodity pricing the pricing you know we have seen some obnoxious pricing which was happening on the commodity side of it and everyone like us we were impacted because of that uh, in terms of the order book we still have an order book of more than a million tons of a line pipe order book confirmed order book which is almost pegged at uh, 1.6 billion dollars it's a confirmed order book in place and you know that will get executed over next four to five quarters hmm. at this point in time the oh. way the way I see the, the the way I see things moving forward, we are still seeing a huge tailwind in this particular segment, and I'm sure that you know this tailwind will see to us for the next three or four years business sustainability on the line pipe segment side of okay. it. Okay, so exports around fifty percent of the total order book. Close. Will will that that proportion remain? And again, if you're talking about say thirteen thousand four hundred crore rupees of order book, how much can you add on to it? <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> we still have a capacity available. If you let's let's talk of from a capacity availability perspective, we have assets here in India, we have assets in Saudi, and we have assets in America. Mm -hmm. Our Saudi assets are booked for the full year. Our U.S. assets are completely booked for full year. Right? All what we have a capacity available here in India, and that is what we are trying to augment. So I think so there will be a significant add-on which mm -hmm. we can uh, which which we can build for this particular year. And now our focus has not shifted. To build the capacity and block our capacity for the next financial year as well. Okay. Mm. So, uh, just to understand the overall capacity and the amount that you're capable of, tra you know, carrying. For instance, I think the current order book is thirteen thousand four hundred crore. What is the maximum that you can service by way of an order book? Just to understand. I would say that let's not go by the okay. uh, uh, from a value Number perspective, value. but let's go by the tonnage perspective. Okay. If historically, if you see, we have been doing close to a million tons of pipe on a year-on-year -year basis. If you okay. see our track record for the last eight years, we have done almost close to a million tons in every year. I think so. We should be doing we should be doing better than this in the next in this and the coming years as well. Okay. okay. So by better, since I asked you earlier as well, what would that mean for your overall margin picture now that commodity price pressures are also easing? You spoke about how it impacted you in quarter one. Uh, full year picture, say two years down the picture, what kind of revenue growth and margins are you expecting? And once your ductile iron business comes on stream, how much will that add on? Right. So, uh, so let's say on the line pipe side of it, you know, I think so. We should we should expect a growth of at least ten to twelve percent, if not fifteen percent, on a year-on-year -year basis. That's the that's the tailwind what we are seeing there. On the ductile iron side of it, we have just commissioned that facility. Mm. You know, the and ductile iron is also back, is supported by a steel plant, a mini yes. steel plant behind that. And uh, this this is a new setup which has just come on stream, like in July of this year. This year, it's taking its own time in terms of settling down. It's settling down very very nicely. But as you, you know, but there the commodity has played differently. Mm. You know, we have taken particular positions on the commodity side of it when the iron ore and the coals were at a very, mm. very peak mm. price at that point mm. of time because there's a lag time. You know, mm. you have to uh, you have to bring those raw materials into your system at least four to six months in advance in order to produce that. Mm. And we got into a very high commodity pricing on that side. So we will see the impact, the negative mm. impact of those commodities coming up. Okay. In, in in our in our so one or two quarters. So it is booked at higher prices, but now inventory losses Correct. will be seen. The inventory losses will be seen. How much have prices fallen since the time you actually booked those uh, prices at higher levels? So they have they have at least got corrected significantly. If you look at a coal side of it, mm. you know, or the coke side of it, which we procured, mm. I think so. The corrections have been more than let's say two hundred dollars a ton, and that's okay. a big number which has mm. happened. And which is see, in a long run, it is the right thing to happen. Mm. It is a momentary thing which has happened. You know, you have entered into a, a, a commodity at a price. Now the commodities have got, got corrected, so maybe it is the impact of a quarter or two. But then, you know, at this pricing, I think so. This business makes a tremendous sense. And okay. looking from a demand perspective, I think so. You know, all business need to be seen from a demand perspective. Mm. The DI business demand is so robust, and the way things are happening on the ground here in India mm. in terms of infrastructure development, I think so. This journey of next five to seven years is going to be extremely interesting in the DI business. So, but just talking about the near near. You know the near and now for the ductile iron business. How much do you think you will be able to, you know, book revenues this year, next year, when things settle down, and what's the extent of inventory losses? So let's say we, on a capacity side of it, we can produce almost close to 400,000 tons of a ductile iron pipe. Right? Okay. That's the capacity what we have mm -hmm. put in at this point in time. This year we should be this, you know, this being the very first year we would see let's say. 
five or six months of a clear operations which will happen. So we are seeing that we should get up, get close to around 100,000 tons. The 100, peak is 100,000 okay. tons. That's what we intend to do. And then subsequent years, I think so that is where we will try to ramp up from mm. 250,000 tons to 300,000 tons. So that is a roadmap. Any new business which you can get into, mm. it requires incubation, yeah. it requires Correct. a ramp up. And this is a, this is a product which, you, you know, the good part is that there is a demand. Mm. That that's the good part of it, that, you know, there is a demand, a robust demand, and it's going to be there for next five to seven years' time. So it's, a, you know, it will be our interest, it is in our interest to ramp up as quickly as possible and, okay. you know, get a portion of, and get a maximum share around that. And the inventory losses? Inventory losses could be there. We are trying to, you know, we are trying to work out. I think so. In the second, by the second quarter, we would see that how, how, how what is the total inventory we have bought and to what extent we should be but able to just adjust. some ballpark. It could be something like close to 100 or crore rupees impact might come. Okay, 100 crore impact. Makes sense. So, last question before we let you go. We need to know, I asked you about the margin picture. Considering all that, a ballpark figure, because quarter one was largely, it was, as you said, a washout quarter. Of course, you'll not see those margins. So, what is the ballpark figure there? And what kind of volume growth are you anticipating? Because uh, US is going to be one of your biggest drivers in FY24. When will those volumes start showing up? So those volumes have, the U.S. operations have started. We would, we would start seeing their volumes and their sales starting happening in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Historically, if you look at it, we have been doing almost an EBITDA margin of like close to 10,000 rupees per ton basis, mm. EBITDA, hybrid mm. EBITDA if you look at it. Mm. I think so we should be able to protect that, if not improve upon that. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Mathur, it was a pleasure having you here and speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, that's all about Wellspin Corp and we we'll hope to see you very soon again uh, Thank you. in our studios. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very there. much. Thank you, uh, appreciate it. Thanks. Joining. Okay, all right. Uh, that's the word coming in from Wellspin Corp. But for now, we'll slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll get you all about stock-specific action and a lot of markets as well. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar on CNBC TV 18. A lot of action in the broader market. So let's go across to Nigel in our Midcap Movers segment today. Hey, Nigel. Well, uh, hey, uh, Sonal. You know, plenty of stocks actually buzzing around from the broader market. So let's start off with some of the stock gainers. Some of the stocks, we don't really talk about them very often. But Terra Software, that stock, midway through the trading session, suddenly there was buying interest that went to upper circuit. Schneider Electric, remember a couple of days ago, they announced the CapEx plan. It seems the street likes that because that one, in fact, is flying away up close to around 13%. Salan Exploration, that's the other one in there. That one's up close to around 17% uh, you know, as we speak and moving higher on rather good volumes. Added to the list, you have Donair Industries. That stock is up and about in trade. Arvind Smart Spaces, well, that stock is well buzzing around. And GSS Infotech, that stock as well is moving higher. It's moving higher on good volumes and in fact has been trending higher all through the trading session. On the flip side though, a couple of these PSUs, you know, public sector units, MMTC, STC, both of them are under some pressure. And a couple of these stocks that ran up big time, it looks like that they're pausing for breath. Case in point being a Russell India, your Finutex Chemicals, as well as Suzlon. All three of them, they are loaded trade. But keep in mind, they have had a big, big run in the last one month or so. Back to you guys. Thank you very much for that. Let's turn our attention to the market technical. Srikant Chauhan of Kotak Securities is now with us on the show. Srikant, afternoon and thanks so much for joining in. Uh, your thoughts on the day so far? Pretty steady, though the mid-caps are sliding as we speak. Uh, any trade? Yeah, good morning, everybody. I think, uh, see, like, the broader market is really doing well. And uh, if we just go through with the broader pattern of the Nifty, then it is in the range. It is not crossing the level of 17,800. Uh, at the same time, 17,400, 500 is acting as very good support for the market. The bias is bullish and that's the reason the strategy should be to look for adding long position if there is any correction during the day. But in case if we see the market is crossing the level of 17,800, then certainly we should be buyer in the market because in that case, we are expecting market to hit the levels of 18,000 very soon. So if there is any correction, we should be buyer or even at current levels, the stop loss should be uh, 17,600 for creating any long positions. Okay, and what would your individual technical picks be in that case? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Zomato is showing a lot of strength. Currently, it is at 61.75. It was around some 45, 47 levels from there all the way to into the levels of uh, some 70, 71. 
and uh, in last few days it was into corrective pattern so after correcting the uh, that particular pattern now it is again rebounding and it is forming some reversal formation on daily basis so it's a buy at current levels we are expecting stock to move back to the levels of 66 67 which is descent from current levels and we can keep stop loss around 60 for the same the other stock which we like is gnfc and uh, here it is uh, forming some again reversal formation it has also completed its corrective pattern and from here the stock can move to the levels of 770 or 780 so it's a buy at current level with a stop loss somewhere close to 730 Thank you very much, uh, Shrikant, for uh, highlighting that. Let's get into a break. Here is a quick reminder for our viewers. Money Control Pro's financial freedom offer is back with added benefits. Get a Money Control Pro subscription at a net zero cost by claiming exciting offers worth 1,500 rupees from our partner brands. Grab the benefits now on the Money Control app or website. Hi, welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar on CNBC TV 18. Markets in a fine fettle, and it's the banking side of things which are doing really well. But a lot of broader market stocks also which are in focus. And Container Corp that continues to be in focus after yesterday uh, we saw the big news coming in uh, from the railway ministry as well. And it is higher today as well after key brokerages suggest that the land license fee decision now paves the way for privatization. More details. Manglam is here with the highlights. Manglam. Exactly why Container Corp is higher in today's trading session. The fact that the land license policy has been cleared and we got some clarity coming in from uh, the railway minister, uh, the railway ministry officials in uh, the press conference today as well. And the brokerages are happy with the fact that now that this hurdle is away, we will perhaps see an accelerated push for privatization and that's what they're pinning their hopes on. What they aren't pinning their hopes on or what they haven't factored in their valuations yet is the potential benefit that will come in because we are still awaiting the details of the exact benefit coming in from the land license fees, whether it's 6%, whether it's 1.5% or how much more it will be once it's bid for. But directionally, it's a positive and that's what you know brokerages like uh, uh, Credit Suisse have been saying as well. Nomura, for instance, they've uh, left their estimates unchanged, but they've upgraded the stock. So that's an interesting move out there. And Jeffries too believes that this was an important uh, step in the path towards privatization. However, the once, uh, one brokerage that stands out is uh, Kotak, which has maintained a or rather downgrade the stock to reduce after yesterday's development because they believe that they had factored in a land license fee of 3% and that hasn't come by. Uh, the 1.5% of course is prospective and not ret retrospective. So they believe this is a negative development as per their estimates. And as far as the privatization is concerned, they believe that this is a positive event, but they can't put a number to it. Thank you very much uh, for highlighting that. Let's get to our favorite mid-cap spotlight segment. Vaishra is here and she's going to focus on the mid-cap stocks. That's reacting to news update. Schneider Electric. Vaishra. Hi, Reema. Thanks for that. Uh, well, Schneider Electric Infra has approved enhancing the production capacity of their vacuum interrupters and vacuum circuit breakers by setting up a manufacturing unit in Kolkata. Now, the existing capacity of the company is at approximately 80,000 MV vac vacuum interrupters with an existing capacity utilization of more than 90%. The capacities will be increased by 1,80,000 MV vacuum interrupters and MV vacuum circuit breakers assembly lines. Now, this will require an outlay of approximately 138 crores, which is to be incurred over a period of next three years. Now, the rationale behind expansion is to meet the domestic demand as well as increase the exports to Schneider Electric Global Entities to accelerate Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative goal of the company. Now, this announcement could lead to a substantial increase in the revenues of this company. In FI22, the revenues were at approximately 1500 crores. So, definitely a good thing for the stock. Okay, the stock is doing really well, up 13% in trade today. Vaishtha, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. Uh, moving on, talking about life insurance companies, they are in focus on the back of their business updates for August. Yash is here with the details. Yash. Well, good growth for the life insurance industry in the month of August and it's the private life insurance industry which has performed slightly better. As far as the total industry is concerned, the premium in the month of August that grew at 18% on a year-on-year -year basis 
up to the month of August, that is year to month, the premium saw a growth of 44%. For private life insurance industry, the August premium grew by about 24% on a year-on-year -year basis. Up to the month of August, the growth was about 35%. LIC. August premium grew at 15% on a year-on-year -year basis and that's a good number on the large base that LIC has but the year-to-month premium that saw even better growth of 49% as far as the retail APE for LIC is concerned that grew by about 5% on a year-on-year -year basis for HDFC life the August premium saw a growth of 15% year-to-month that is up to August again 15% growth in premium and retail APE grew by about 16% on a year-on-year -year basis ICICI potential life the August premium that saw a growth of 11%. Year-to-month premium saw a growth of 19%. Though the retail annualized premium equivalent or APE, that shrunk by about 14% on a year-on-year -year basis. Now, speaking about the weakest spot this time around and the strongest spot, the weakest spot was Max Financial Services. The August premium shrunk by about 1% on a year-on-year -year basis. Year-to-month premium was up 10%. The retail APE also came down by about 12% on a year-on-year -year basis. The strongest spot, SBI Life Insurance. August premium growing at 21% on a year-on-year -year basis, year-to-month premium up to the month of August growing at 44%. The retail AP though uh, shrunk by about 5% on a year-on-year -year basis. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Yash, for that. With that, we're out of time on Mid-Cap Radar. Thank you for watching.